I'm excited to hop into it. Um, let's go ahead and do just that. You know, maybe we can start out by talking about automation. And, um, you know, what I hear a lot, there's uh, so many different kind of views about automation. You know, sometimes we think about it as, as robotics and we think of that movie, iRobot, right? But uh, right. is automation really more than robotics? Yeah, absolutely. It is. I think um, it's, it, it doesn't just have to do with, I think the first thing that we kind of need to overcome is that we tend to think of it in this binary way because of how sci-fi has affected our, our view of, you know, AI in the future, but it's oftentimes it's kind of taking, you know, economics is all about studying things at the margin. A lot of AI is taking a margin of people's jobs. Okay. So if you think of, you know, what's, what is the future, what's, what's an office place going to look like 10 years down the road? It, you know, maybe an office that previously had 10 people will have six people um, or six FTEs, let's say, because, you know, they may be different people working at different times because certain fractions have been shaved away. You know, I think we see this through things like Calendly, right? Or some of these, these tools that, uh, productivity tools that we all use, uh, project management systems, um, you know, MailChimp, like those things have replaced jobs, right? Sure, they've, they've created other jobs for, for people to administer those kinds of things and, um, you know, on an external or consulting basis and that kind of thing. But uh, we, you know, when you look at the history of how technology has affected the labor market, it's usually that type of thing. Um, it's not like instantaneous, you know, here comes the, uh, the robot, it's fully replacing this job. It, it comes in bits and pieces, it augments the existing labor market and you know, the, the nature of creative destruction, it also creates other needs uh, for people to do different types of jobs. Uh, something you hear a lot about in the manufacturing setting is the idea of mechatronics. Uh, so it used to be that we had a bunch of people who had different spots on a production line and they would you know, stamp that thing or press that thing or pinch it or whatever. Those, those are mechanized. So AI and machines have kind of taken the place of a lot of those things. Uh, but what you need is somebody who can you know, program those, those tools, who can uh, fix them when they're not working, who can you know, read, the, read the, uh, the codes that are telling you what the error is, those kinds of things, right? So um, just like you, know, you can't fix a, a Ford like you could in 1955 by yourself, Right, it's the uh, um, same thing is going on in the manufacturing setting. You can't, you just can't get a mechanic in there to fix this stuff. They need to actually be technologically skilled at the same time. Yeah. So, Brian, I, re I read this uh, study. I think it was done by Deloitte. Um, you know, last year at some point, and what it said on there is that uh, I think it was like seventy or eighty percent of CEOs are thinking about automation in their business. You know, currently. So, whatever the percentage might be, it seems like a lot of business owners and business leaders are thinking about automation and trying to implement automation in their business. Uh, but why, why is that? Why would they rather, you know, automate some things versus hiring more people and putting them on? Yeah. Well, I I think that uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One of them is it can be a cost saver, but it's the kind of cost saver that you need to be looking at the. Um, um, the, the value over time, right? Uh, because you're going to lose money spending a ton of money on a, a new machine, right, in the short term. But if you think of that in terms of, you know, the depreciation over 50 years, you know, versus bringing a person in, uh, paying them benefits, all those types of things. Uh, and obviously now we have a labor shortage issue as well. So I uh, something that's interesting to me is that up until about 10 minutes ago, when people started panicking about the labor shortage, everybody was panicking about automation. And I remember that, it wasn't that long ago. So uh, those things can actually help each other uh, in a sense because, because of the labor shortages, it just adds a further incentive for businesses to invest in those labor saving types of technologies. Um, you know, we, we've talked about manufacturing. Uh, there's a lot of other places where you know, that, that can start happening. Um, you know, I just, I found, I, I wanted to know more about this topic. So I looked up some stats on um, day, uh, employment by occupation at the U.S. level. And I was surprised to find that if you just look at retail clerks and truck drivers, those two jobs combined make up 5% of the American workforce. Okay. I, I kind of feel like both of those jobs won't really exist in 25 years. 
or at least not nearly in the same way that they do now. So um, this, this automation thing, yeah, it may take years and years, especially when it comes to things like um, um, you know, automated vehicles, because there's also kind of a regulatory element to it, but it's part of the solution and part of what we need to look into from a business standpoint to, uh, to deal with the labor issues. So where the robots gonna take over? Should we be concerned <laughs> about the automation taking our jobs? Yeah, I mean, depends on who your who your favorite sci-fi, you know, uh, uh, author is. Uh, I I have a pretty optimistic vision of it, I guess, because um, you know I think, in one sense, if you take away the routine tasks that honestly none of us really like to do anyway, it enables people to actually be more human, I think, and do those creative interpersonal types of things that humans excel at. Humans don't excel at doing the same thing equally well and exactly the same over and over and over again. That's that's why we use machines. We're just finding new ways to put them in place. But it's actually, if you go back to um, um, Adam Smith, uh, not the, the Wealth of Nations, but he wrote a, another book that the name escapes me right now, but he talked about this issue of how problematic industrialization was in the sense that it was kind of causing people to become to you know be machines in a sense and it was dehumanizing so i think that that's uh, you know philosophically <clears throat> there's also a really kind of um uh, optimistic aspect to automation for me <laughs>